Hi everyone, my name is uh, Lina Amar. I'm a PhD student at Insa Doran in France. Uh, today I'm presenting the, uh, the, my work uh, entitled by the effect of NGO-based expensive agent on the cement-based motor behavior. Um, just a second. Okay. So uh, the outline of my uh, presentation is as follows. I'm going to start with a brief introduction about the context and the main objectives of my work, followed by the um, presentation of the materials and mixture proportions, uh, and finally the main results in order to conclude this study. So um, our main objective is to design a repair motor having the ability to, um, to heal or to reduce crack that may appear in the structure. The autonomous healing is our interest where the matrix can form new products inside pores or, or in the, inside the cracks. And uh, therefore, the swelling mechanism is possible uh, that, could leading, that could lead to the reduction of the crack size. So using shrinkage reducers uh, in the mixture um, could promote this uh, process and reduce the crack formation and also, of course, delay the rupture moment of the matrix. According to that, we uh, decided to design cement-based motor incorporating um, several contents of shrinkage reducer that contain 80% of magnesium oxide. Uh, after that, after the characterization of the materials, the hydration characteristic and the material behavior at micro and micro scale will be evaluated and of course, the, their self-healing capacities. So in order to achieve these goals, as I said, um, we proposed three cement-based mortars with three content of MGO, as you can see in this table, with 0%, 5%, and 10%. Uh, the, the shrinkage reducer MGO is replaced by cement mass replacement. And also, we added super plasticizer in order to obtain um, a good work workability for all the mixture that will be applied as a repair motor in the future. And finally, we added steel fibers only to, to the mixtures that will be used for water permeability tests. And this part will be uh, explained later. So the sand used were sized between zero and four millimeter. Then um, the, the specific surface area of the Portland cement and the MGO were characterized by sorption analysis using BET method. So you can see that um, the surface area of the, port, the Portland cement is way uh, um, smaller than that of the MGO. This is also shown by the laser granulometry where the major particle of the Portland cement um, are um, less than 14 microns were that were, were that while that of MGO are higher than 19 microns. So let's discuss some of the results. So starting with the hydration characteristics, the thermal power and the hydration uh, heat were characterized by um, isothermal calorimetry. Uh, so here in, from these two figures, you can see that the dormant period of uh, the mixture increase with the increase uh, of MGO content in the mixture, as well as the first hydration peak and its corresponding uh, released heat. So what about their mechanical strength? So you can, uh, so we, um, we, deter we, we did a flexure and compressive test according to the European standard here below. Uh, the specimens were cured at 20, uh, in a humid chamber at 20 degrees. So here in these two diagrams, you can see um, the, the um, compression to, uh, sorry, the strength, the strength value, um, the resistance to flexion and to compression for the three proposed motor up to 90 days. So you can notice that uh, the strength value of the reference have always, uh, are always larger than that of uh, the composition with MGO. Plus with uh, the increasing uh, content of MGO to 10%, the corresponding um, resistance are, slow, uh, are smaller than with 5% of MGO. So what is the impact of MGO on the microstructure of cement-based mortar? So we did deformation measurements in two types of curing conditions. The first one is an autogenous condition, and the second one uh, in a humid chamber at uh, till 28 days, then into water. 
In parallel, we did an internal relative humidity measurements also in autogenous condition. So uh, here you can see the autogenous deformations, uh, the autogenous deformation and the internal relative humidity for all the three mixture. Uh, you can directly notice that the reference shows a very fast shrinkage during the first week. And it's also showed by its internal relative humidity. However, the shrinkage, this shrinkage is well, comp uh, is well reduced when using 5% of MGO, and it's compensated just after two days when using 10% of MGO. Similarly, for the total uh, deformation, you can see here also that the reference starts with a very fast shrinkage during the first week and tends to vary around the constant value after this stage. However, this shrinkage is, um, is compensated after 32 days uh, when using 5% of MGO, and then the matrix starts to swell. However, when using 10% of MGO, the shrinkage is compensated directly from the first day, and the matrix swells very fast after this stage. In parallel, you can see that uh, the, the specimen's mass increase with the increase of interaction between specimen and its surrounding environment. So this process promotes the hydration uh, and reduces the shrinkage, but, um, but it's well promoted when using MGO in the mixture and especially 10%. So what type of shrinkage uh, of hydration products are formed when using MGO in the mixture? To answer this question, we did a thermogravimetric analysis at 28 days old specimen cured in a humid chamber. So uh, this test provides us with the DTG curves that, that shows several peaks that indicate the decomposition of certain hydration products. So here in this table, you can see the values calculated from this peak corresponding to three hydration products. So you can see that the, the Portlandite, the Portlandite and the calcite appears, the peak of decomposition of Portlandite and calcite appears for all the mixture. However, the brucid decomposition appear only for mixture with NGO in their matrix. So this could explain the fact, that, the fact that we have reduction in the material strength, as I showed previously, due to the weaker chemical bonds between brucid crystals compared to the CSH gel formed in the Portland cement. Also, it could explain the, explanation, the swelling of the matrix due to the crystallization pressure uh, of brucid formation. Finally, we did... Um, we have to evaluate the self-healing capacities of the proposed motor. So this was made by water permeability test, which is, which is a 3D approach to monitor the healing of the crack. So it consists of, of um, cracking the specimen at 28 days old by a splitting test to obtain a crack width of 200 micrometer. After that, we did um, a crack width measurement due um, by, um, by microscope. And finally, uh, the water permeability test is implemented by gluing a transparent tube on the top of the disc and fill it with water. After that, we, um, we monitor the quantity of the water passed through the disc on a balance up to three hours. Then the water flow and the healing rate are calculated using this formula. And also, uh, the test was made at several ages and the uh, specimens were cured in, into water. So I'm going to start to show you the results of the crack width monitoring in terms of the initial crack width for all the mixture at several ages. So you can see from these graphs that, um, that with the increasing, um, increasing time of the water curing duration, the crack width decreases for all the composition. However, uh, this is a 2D monitoring of the crack healing. It's not sufficient in, uh, in terms of crack healing because it's limited only on the crack surface. So that's why we calculated the healing rate in terms of the water flow. So here you can see uh, the water flow is divided into three groups, corresponding each for uh, each uh, for a crack width, initial crack width, because the water flow uh, strongly is, is strongly influenced by the uh, width of the crack and its tortuosity. So according to that, I present um, 
the healing rate for each range of water flow, starting with uh, the water flow lower than smaller than 0.025 liter per minute. You can see that uh, the reference and the MG, MG10 shows uh, both show both uh, similar healing rates during time up to four months of water curing. So um, the 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 crack width in this stage is uh, sl uh, smaller than 150 micrometer. In this case, the cracks are healed naturally without any effect of MGO. So this is the autogenous healing. Our focus is on this interval and this water flow range between 0 0.025 and 0 0.05 liter per minute. So here you can, it's correspond to uh, crack width uh, specimens that crack between uh, 150 and 200 50 micrometers, so the desired crack width from the beginning. So you can see here that at each age, the MG10 with 10% of MG of MGO, the mixture shows the highest healing rate even after four months of water curing, while the other are uh, the healing rate of the others uh, is very uh, small, uh, slow during time. Finally, for a water flow very high, higher than 0 0.05, it corresponds for specimens having a large crack width. And in this case, the, the, the evolution of the healing rate is very slow during time. So as an average for this study, you can see that the, the MG10 always shows the, healing, uh, the highest healing rate over time for a water flow very high. So as a conclusion, we saw that the addition of MGO to the cement-based mortar caused a slight decrease in its um, uh, strength value. However, it reduced its significantly its shrinkage. And in some cases, there's some expansion due to brisset formation. Also, it promotes the self-healing of large cracks. So in particle, in our study, MG10 is characterized by the highest healing rate over time. It's a good expensive behavior because no uh, cracks were observed on its surface. And it's also confirmed by its high resistance that are very close to that of the Portland cement. However, these uh, hypotheses need to be confirmed with other um, experimental tests. Especially, uh, we need to, it's very necessary to understand the effect of MGO on the microstructure on the, it means on it, it, we must evaluate the micropores and microcracks, as well as it must, we must understand the swelling mechanism of MGO and its hydration kinetics. So this is uh, the last of my presentation. Thank you so much for listening.